Hello, my name is Denise Bissnett. I'm presenting today on behalf of Santee Cooper as a FERC project administrator. Chad Holbrook, our fisheries biologist, is also participating in the workshop and has been instrumental in the success of our involvement in the demonstration project thus far. We have had a fairly compressed timeline, and along the way, there were a number of challenges. Some traverses through the camp of the Just Say No crowd, but mostly, this is a story of how we got to yes. Today, I'm going to cover four topics. First, a brief history of the Santee Cooper Project and our involvement in the EPRI demonstration project. The project was built during the Depression and commenced operation during World War II. Today, the project supports the state's economy as a tourism magnet for fishing, hunting, water sports, and more. The five counties around the lakes realized over $400 million in tourism revenues in 2016, provided nearly 4,000 jobs with an annual payroll of nearly $70 million. Even more important, the lakes are the source of drinking water for nearly three quarters of a million people and process water for dozens of industrial users. Life as we know it in the Low Country would not exist without the Santee Cooper Project. Licensing has focused and evolved over each subsequent license. The initial license established the project purpose as providing hydroelectric power and navigation. In the 70s, when the second license was issued, dam safety was the primary focus due to a number of failures. Subsequent to the second license issuance, stronger environmental regulations and an emphasis on fish passage grew and is the focus of the current licensing efforts. The estimated cost of fish passage will be a burden to the project economics and is what drove our efforts to find innovative and potentially more cost-effective passage options. The estimated cost to comply with the new license terms, again, is related to fish passage. At the lower end, the costs are associated with eel passage at two dams, shad and herring passage at one dam, and higher flows to improve habitat downstream of the spillway. At the upper end, the costs are associated with turbine protections and sturgeon passage, both upstream and downstream. Santee Cooper's participation in the WUSH demonstration project began in 2018, and within 18 months, we were hosting the year one field demonstration. The first challenge was to get buy-in from our fisheries biologists that WUSH was a viable technology. The second challenge was obtaining approval from EPRI to allow Santee Cooper to participate in the project. The third challenge was getting funding approved for the project. And the fourth challenge was getting a contract signed. The second topic will cover challenges in getting an approved location for the demonstration to take place in the spring of 2020. Sandy Cooper's participation ramped up in November of 2019 as the participants were attempting to find a site to conduct the demonstration. The primary two sites in the Northeast were ruled out soon after the October workshop. The fifth challenge was overcome when EPRI and the other project sponsors agreed to conduct the demonstration in South Carolina. Santee Cooper agreed to pursue the necessary approvals and two potential sites were identified. The first was the Corps of Engineers St. Stephen Rediversion Project and the backup was Santee Cooper's Jeffrey's Generating Station. We sought approval from Santee Cooper's Hydro Generation and Dam Safety Groups, and Santee Cooper's Marine Services agreed to assist with mobilization and logistics to deploy the WUSH equipment. The third topic will cover the challenges in getting local stakeholder approvals to conduct the demonstration in the spring of 2020. Initial discussions with the Corps were held in December since their St. Stephen Rediversion Project contained a traditional fish lift and would address one of the main project purposes, which was to compare the Wush fish transport system with a traditional fish lift. Initially, we were optimistic this would move forward because Wush had conducted a demonstration in September of 2019 at the Corps Chief Joseph Dam in Astoria, Oregon. Unfortunately, by early January, 
it was apparent there was not enough time to obtain local core approval prior to the spring fish migration season, which begins in mid-February and ends in late April, depending on water temperatures. The sixth challenge was moving the demonstration site to the Jeffreys Tail Race and obtain approvals from the resource agencies, primarily due to the known presence of sturgeon in the tail race. Chad worked closely with the state DNR fishery biologists to gain their approval and support. Full disclosure here, Chad worked for DNR until September of 2019 when he became Santee Cooper's fishery biologist and was assigned to facilitate license compliance. Soon after Jeffries was determined to be the site, there was a full court press to obtain approval from the National Marine Fisheries Service due to their role in protecting the endangered sturgeon. Wush, Alden Labs, DNR, and Santee Cooper worked with the NIMPS team to get the green light. Although most agreed the demonstration project as designed was unlikely to attract sturgeon, it required Wush, Alden, and Santee Cooper to develop a safety plan in order to safely handle sturgeon and shut down the demonstration if a sturgeon was encountered. The seventh challenge was to reduce Santee Cooper's risk associated with serving as a project host. This was primarily due to the potential for an unpermitted take of sturgeon. Santee Cooper's legal and risk representatives coordinated closely with Epri, Wush, and Alden to finalize the documentation within a few days. The final challenge, and this was due to the series of delays caused by each of the preceding challenges, was for Wush to quickly mobilize from the Pacific Northwest to the Southeast Coast. As part of the deployment, they had to develop a level of confidence with Santee Cooper's Marine crew that their equipment would be safely handled, set up, and placed into position. The next several slides contain photos illustrating the mobilization and demobilization of the equipment. On March 5th, the Wush barge arrived in sections. It was launched into the diversion canal and pushed upstream a couple of miles to our Camp 2 Marine Crew work site. The next day, the tractor trailer arrived and was secured behind the fence for the weekend. On Monday, March 9th, our Marine Crew with Wush guidance began installation of the equipment onto the barge. The second slide shows how large the Alaskan Steep Pass entrance flume is. Installation continued for the remainder of that week. By Thursday, March 12th, the barge setup was complete and Wush personnel began setup at Jeffries along the East Dam. On Monday, March 16th, the weather forecast was good and the Marine crew began to move the barges through the Diversion Canal and across Lake Moultrie. It's about 15 miles and took approximately six hours to make the crossing and enter the lock. Santee Cooper's crane was used to set the Wush barge spuds and install the dock and ramp for access. Whoosh crew suspended the flexible tube from the barge to the crest of the dam and Santee Cooper assisted with placing the fish pen in the lake which would allow fish to reorient after exiting the tube. On March 23rd demobilization began and on March 31st Whoosh equipment departed South Carolina for Canada. The final topic, I'll cover some lessons learned. Developing partnerships with resource agencies during challenging times. Over the 20-year licensing process, the project has had its share of ups and downs. In the past four years, the process restarted after about a decade delay and new personalities were involved. This allowed for the forging of new relationships based on common goals and understanding and helped facilitate approval for this demonstration project by the resource agencies. Having facts so management has confidence the project can succeed, we were able to demonstrate the new technology could be cost effective. However, it just took some time and work to gain approvals. We needed to plan and prepare for contingencies. Site-specific contingencies included a health and safety plan to deal with alligators and poisonous snakes in the vicinity of the barge, and an oil containment and spill control plan due to the proximity to the critical area of the coast. And then there was a global pandemic. The scheduled two-week evaluation period was cut to two days due to work and travel restrictions caused by COVID-19. 
Although the experiment was cut short and the evaluation could not be completed, valuable knowledge was gained during the mobilization of the system. Santee Cooper will continue to evaluate new fish passage technology and looks forward to participating in the WUSH passage evaluation in 2021. Finally, I'd like to thank a few people. Paul Jacobson as the EPRI project manager for his patience in working with our team. Besides Chad and myself, there were a number of Santee Cooper personnel that were involved. Finally, our partners in licensing compliance that serve on the resource management team. And a special thanks to Kavita McLeod for the opportunity to participate. Next, we have an appropriately short video showing the COVID shortened demonstration. We're here today in the Tailwraith Canal, just downstream of Panopolis Dam. We're taking part in a whoosh demonstration of their fish passage portal. Santee Cooper is partnering with EPRI and Alden Labs in Woosh to test out some new equipment that Woosh has for fish passage. We're out here today uh, deploying our system, the fish portal, to see if we can move American shad uh, from down here uh, all the way up there above the dam. We have a bunch of water that we're pumping down and it attracts the fish in. And so as the fish swims in, they will jump over a uh, weir and that's the highest point. And from there, they're sliding down. And this unit is our official uh, recognition system. And what it has is it has a series of cameras that will take photos from different angles. And so from that information, it has about a half of a second to tell our uh, control unit how to move the fish from them. So whether it's in uh, lane one or any, uh, any of the other lanes or back into the water. So we're looking at our tube system here and we have a uh, really low friction misted tube uh, that allows the fish to go from the bottom of the dam all the way up to the top of the dam, depending on the length of the, the dam or the height of the dam uh, in less than about 15 seconds. Fish, uh, when they're handled uh, by humans, will have higher cortisol levels because that's not what they want. Our completely volitional system, completely automated system, doesn't handle the fish at all. And the, there's no trouble, there's no uh, ailments that happen to the fish that they wouldn't otherwise receive in the wild for the most part. It's better for the fish because it's safer for them. They're less stressed as they're transported up to the lake. It's better for our customers because if we're able to do this successfully, it's a lower cost solution. And it's better for the environment. We're getting the fish back to where they were before the dams were created. And if all of those things happen, then this would be a great success. Um, if you compare this to the current way that fish are transported, um, I mean, it can take days to get through some of our dams in America. And uh, they're tired, they're going to uh, be skinnier, they're not going to be as uh, prolific after that event. Um, so we're basically taking the stairs and turning it into an escalator. Um, and uh, it's helping the survivability of the fish and the fish species as a whole.